Just on the edge of Santa Fe was the small community of Agua Fria. 400 years ago, the Spanish built a road from Mexico City to north of Santa Fe called El Camino Real. Agua Fria was the last water stop on the road before Santa Fe. By the 60s, it was getting harder to tell where one started and the other stopped. We consider ourselves to be out of, to live out of town. <laughs> We'd have to go into town. Uh, yeah, we, we had our own culture. We, People knew when you were from Agua Fria. I don't know what they saw in us, but uh, now you can't see the difference. Now it's just uh, so many people have moved into that community. But back then, you knew everybody. You knew who lived in what house. Uh, you knew all the family. You could name all the kids in everybody's family. Um, you knew everything that was going on <laughs> in everybody's family because the moms all kept in touch with each other, uh, and that was before Facebook. <laughs> that was just through the telephone. <laughs> they would meet at the fence and talk for hours, um, but it was a very close community. I was really involved in the youth group that my brother Frank and Steve Pike started called Magma, so we were very involved uh, in that youth group, which was through the Catholic Church. That took all our time, you know. So when I was younger and they, they had formed a, the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and I, even that helped me to learn how to uh, administrate things. So I saw how they did it, and then when my time came, I was the treasurer, and we ran the, the, the uh, youth group. First it started small, it was just a, a few of us. I. Um, I don't remember the details since I was just a participant. I wasn't, you know, an organizer, but uh, that is where our family first started singing together. Uh, Leroy would allow us to, you know, to sing, to help with worship. Um, and then it started getting bigger. We would uh, bring in kids. Another group joined us uh, from uh, a Catholic church. I believe it was Guadalupe. Uh, they were a group that used to meet there and they joined us, that made it bigger. And then we started reaching the kids in Pecos and they would take uh, first, they would bring them in cars and then it was too much and they'd bring them in vans and then in a school bus. And so they'd go pick them up in Pecos and then take them back. Um, and it was, the bus was full and so the house was full. Um, I mean, Leroy's den was so full that people would stand in the kitchen that overlooked the den just to be able to hear and see what was going on. People would be sitting on the stairway and it just was packed uh, with kids that were hungry. They genuinely were hungry for the Lord. Now, where they are today, I don't know. But at that time, they were genuinely hungry for the Lord and uh, wanting to come and receive. Of course, there was probably some with other motivations, just trying to get out of Pecos or whatever, but um, they were affected. They were, you know, we reached a lot of kids in Pecos. And, um, yeah, I like I said, that you know, it went from that to wanting to start a church. And I think that that's kind of what uh, brought it to us, well, a change. Because even though Leroy said he didn't want to start a church, and we started going to um, First Assembly. He did later start a church. I just enjoyed, I just got to enjoy going. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to make the decisions of, you know, how are we going to get the kids from Pecos here? Or the liability of bringing all these kids from Pecos here. So as a teenager, I just, I just got to enjoy getting to know new kids and, uh, singing now and then on Fridays and um, I know there was one time I was able to teach on a Friday night it so happened it was a snowstorm so very the kids from Pecos didn't come which was probably good for me <laughs> so I mean it was my first it was my first our all of us our first time to step out and you know being able to teach from the Bible or lead worship which to us we didn't know was leading worship we thought we were you know singing a special or singing a song um, 
So I think it was more, it was challenging to us as, as teenagers, um, but we didn't have the responsibility that, you know, Leroy and May and Arlene and Frank had. My family have all pretty much gone into ministry in some capacity. Not everyone, but a majority. My two sisters went through Youth of the Mission, uh, and lots of my nephews and nieces have uh, joined Youth of the Mission or gone through the schooling, the training school. Well, you know, Frank became a pastor. Um, let's see, uh, Jude, my youngest brother, became a pastor. And then my sister Susan and my sister Flora went into Youth of the Mission. After I did, Susan continued. She married a Chilean. They uh, worked in the base mostly in Chile, but they also went on to uh, China and stayed there for, I believe, six years with Youth of the Mission. Um, Flora and her husband, they did the training schools. They worked at the base in Texas for a couple years. And then they, they've they gone back into, Larry has a, an appliance business in Michigan, but their kids have gone. Um, one daughter went to Youth of the Mission in Germany. Um, this Another daughter is you know, right now going through her training school in Colorado Springs. And the third daughter wants to do hers, I believe, in Denver. Um, but every, I mean, the majority of them are very involved in their churches and uh, have taken on, you know, leadership roles. Uh, a lot of my family have been called into worship ministry for some reason. That's a gifting that God has given. So uh, my kids are all involved in worship. Uh, two of them were involved at, at Mission Viejo. Uh, the rest were with us at, at Life in Red. I don't think anything, any of that would have happened. Our lives would have, you know, unfortunately I see different people uh, in the Alba Fria community who didn't want anything to do with uh, getting out of the Catholic Church and knowing more about personal relationship with Jesus. They said, you know, Catholic, Catholics are what they are and Catholics is what they will die of being. And so, um, I don't know, I see their lives when I go to funerals or I see them at different things like that, I, I see that they're not fulfilled in their lives. They, they were content just going to church on Sundays and, you know, thought that that's all there was. And I'm so glad that we found out that that's not all there was. And there was, you know, it was a personal relationship and a, a, a life of abundance. I would not have been able to travel and, and meet thousands of people that I've met and um, and my kids, you know, they have just been exposed to different cultures, different languages. Um, even though as missionaries we were on a very fixed income, my kids don't regret it. They don't regret the hard times that we went through financially because the memories that they have been able to build as you know as kids and as a family unit that you know we have been close as a family unit they they appreciate that and i i am very grateful that we were able to raise our kids in the environment that they were raised in i think they have, they're just they're very open to different cultures and different ways of thinking even they've come to their own way of thinking because of being exposed to so much and so they're they're strong for it and yeah well yes i even remember my dad <laughs> when my before my dad became a christian he he dug his heels into the ground and said no nope, i will not give up worshiping the virgin mary uh you can't ask me to do that and he just you know, um, he had a hard time. He had a hard time with all of it. And then when he finally did give his life to the Lord and saw that that was uh, the right way, he um, gave his whole heart to the Lord. I mean, he he 
loved Jesus so much and was such a great example to all of us. Um, but yes, I have relatives who, at one of the graduation parties that we were at for one of her, uh, I believe it was for her nephew, and uh, we were we were standing there in her kitchen, and her nephew was asking us questions about Jesus and you know what what had happened to us, and we were telling them, and she would come by and say, okay, okay, stop talking about that, you know, join the party. And we didn't, he just, it just, the conversation just kept going. And she said, no, stop, stop talking about that here. Um, and so we, she, I, I'm not really sure how it happened, but it was an ultimatum that if we didn't stop, that we would have to leave. And so we left. And that was the, you know, one, of, that's the last time I was in her home. That did cause a, a, a very huge wall between us. Um, so yeah, she, she didn't want anything to do with us. She wouldn't come to different things, uh, that had, that were held in the Christian church. She, um, yeah, it, it put a huge wall between our family and their family and we had been close. Yes, my, I think my parents raised us that way, that if we did something, we did it 100%. And we saw that in them as, even in the Catholic Church, my parents uh, didn't just go to church on Sundays. They helped serve, they helped clean. My mom would take, you know, the priest's um, robes home and wash them and iron them. And, you know, she she put in everything she could with, with what she had. And... Um, they were there every time the church doors were open, and that's how they raised us. So he, that did translate back, you know, to the Christian uh, church. When Christian Life was building their new church, my dad was there every evening after work and would take us with him, and we'd be painting and building and whatever. So yes, that was something my parents ingrained in us. We'd like to hear your answers to these questions, so please leave your answer in the comment section below. Do you want to hear more about the people in this video? Check out their stories and comments over here. We will have more each week. And don't forget to like, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Until next time, God bless.